we're with this program, it's called Road Trip Nation, and it's where we, we go around, we interview people already in their professions okay. to see what kind of path they took and to help guide us to like find out what we really want to do. First thing, like, how, how did you get to where you're at now? Ever since I was 11 years old, I, I started doing my ventriloquism and my puppets. Um, that just always fascinated me. I used to watch TV shows like Paul Winchell, Winchell Mahoney Time, um, uh, Danny O'Day and, and Jimmy Nelson on TV. And I, every time I would see a puppet on TV, it would just really fascinate me, especially a ventriloquist puppet or, uh, or, or what we call a, a hard figure or a dummy, such as uh, um, Stanley here. Um, so I, I really took an interest in that. And uh, when I was 11, 10 or 11 years old, uh, I think I saved up about $15 and sent off in the Sears catalog for a Danny O'Day doll, which was just a little vinyl, had a vinyl head, a stuffed body, and a little string on the back of the neck that you would, that you'd, you know, make his mouth talk. I think I was in fifth or sixth grade, and I actually, like, did really well in the, in the talent contest, the talent show at school. So, since I, since that happened and people were kind of liking it, I liked the attention that I got with it, and so I, I kind of pursued entertainment. I've always wanted to be a world famous Walt Disney character. You know, one of the character costumes yeah. at Disneyland. So when I was a senior in high school, you had to be 18 to work there. And they had, uh, I found out that they were having auditions for characters. So I went ahead and, and I auditioned and it was a really hard audition. You had to dance and I wasn't a dancer. You had to do all kinds of things. Just basically make a fool out of yourself. And I actually, that was a dream that came true. Because I started working at Disneyland uh, when I was a senior in high school, okay? Um, and probably the reason why I didn't further an educational, you know, yeah. walk down the educational road was because probably a year or two after I had gotten my job at Disneyland, um, I, I, they actually brought me on as a permanent employee. And probably within, within three years, I was working full time at Disneyland. And I was, I was working in the character department and entertainment and doing the character costumes. And then that eventually led to... Uh, uh, a, a job where I could do my ventriloquism there. I would, I would fill in at the Golden Horseshoe Review with, uh, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Jim Adams who was a ventriloquist who actually filled in for the main comedian on the stage. And so I auditioned to, to fill in for Jim when he was filling in for the other comedian. So I actually got to use some of my ventriloquist skills at Disneyland and I got paid union wages for it. So that was good. But I always enjoyed working with my puppets. So I would do, you know, birthday parties and um, things like that, make $50 on the side extra. Um, but just recently, um, ventriloquism has made a comeback, you know, probably about the last five or six, seven years, maybe 10 or so. Um, there's been kind of a new interest in the art, in the art of ventriloquism. So um, when I first started in ventriloquism, things were, you know, there were, it was hard to get, to get a nice puppet like this. Um, There's one or two guys that would make puppets and you could buy them for somewhere around two hundred dollars or something like that 200 250 bucks Do you want to see do you want to see one of my yeah. do you want to see one of my puppets? Okay. This is Stanley and uh, Stanley everybody likes Stanley. He's my he's my little boy We call we call this in, in ventriloquism. We call this a figure Okay, people people say that they're ventriloquist dummies um, but we call him a figure here in, in, uh, in the ventriloquist world. Oh. And Stanley is actually, is actually made by one of the finest figure makers in America today. His name is Tim Selberg. And uh, Stanley was actually about 2700 bucks to have made. And it took, it took about, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an extensive guy. You know? Hey Gary, how you doing? Pretty good. It's yeah. good to see you. What, what you been doing? What's Gary, does Gary think he wants to be a ventriloquist? You want to be a ventriloquist, Gary? Maybe. Oh, maybe he doesn't. You know what I like? You know what I like about you, Gary? You look right at me when I'm talking to you. That's good. You see, that's part of the illusion where you make your character be believable. And I'll get out another one of my characters. This is Rocco the Mafioso Bulldog. Now, this is this is a soft character. Now, you know what? I make a good living doing what I do, you know, working in the medical field, but, it, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. So, ultimately... What I'm going to do is, I just got back from the ventriloquist. Hey, what are you doing here? Who are all these people in our house here? How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey, so good about it. That's Rocco, so you can see the diversity in the characters here. I'll, get one, I'll do one more here. Now this, 
This character here, his name is Reginald. He's a big fella. Yeah, he's a big guy. And, uh, you know, ever since I was probably third or fourth grade, I was always a fan of the Three Stooges. I used to come home from school and, uh, and watch the Three Stooges all the time. And uh, so I based, I based Reginald's character. Let me, hey, how you doing? I based Reginald's character on Curly from the Three Stooges. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Certainly. How you doing? Hey, no, not now. I gotta fix the tomb. To the tomb. To the tomb. To the tomb. 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 Yeah. Hey. All right. Who caught a s in here? I can smell it. Come on. Give me a break. Hey, come on. We're on video. I don't want you talking that way. Well, don't make me say stupid things like that. So crying out loud. So I've taken you from high school to Disneyland. You know, fulfilled one of my childhood dreams. And um, that was probably one of the best times of my life was the 14 years that I was working at Disneyland. Yeah, but you know what the worst part of my life was? What? When I found you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Reginald. Ah, oh, don't mention it. What's your next goal? Are you trying to go like how Jeff, Dun Jeff Dunham is doing? Well, you know, Jeff Dunham is, is, is you know, pretty much at the, uh, at the top of the ventriloquist uh, ladder there because, because of his popularity. You know, he's a good ventriloquist, he's got good characters, he's a talented guy. He make, you know, all those puppets he pretty much makes on his own. Um, but uh, I've seen some, you know, they're, they're, you, you, know you, you think of ventriloquism or you think of people that do puppets and there's, there's you know, you, there's really not a whole lot of us around. But um, I think if you're, if, you're a, if you're a pretty good ventriloquist and you have good characters and good characterizations like I like to think that I do, um, people like you and they want to hire you to do things, you know, so... Um, I do want to pursue more seriously, take this more seriously, and, and, and you know, maybe in a year or two, I'll be doing that full time. So but, you're, you're looking to go, like, to start traveling? Yeah, ultimately what I'd like to do is if something happened to, to, to the job that I'm doing now, I would really like to rely and go full time into my, into my own business and have control over, ah. you know, when you have your own business, you kind of have control over what you, yeah. what you can do with it. I'll have fun at least. Even if, I, even if I'm unemployed and broke, I can take one of my puppets on, stand on the curb with a sign and say, you know, help, I'm unemployed. Let me entertain you for a buck. So at least there'll be some revenue coming in that way. Did you, did you have anyone that like just like doubted you? Like, I mean, just like didn't think it was a good idea to go in that kind of business? Oh, you know what? I've always, I've always had encouragement. You know, I mean, from my wife encourages me. My wife went to the ventriloquist convention, and there's not, you know, sometimes there's, you know, you don't get a whole lot of support. But, well, my kids thought I was silly. You know, my two boys, they would, I would probably embarrass them. I don't think so much now that they're men, but when they were little, and I'd get my puppets out, I think they thought I was making a fool of myself. So I want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you Gary. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. You're very kind to come over to my house and interview me.